Hi, it's Samantha from Samantha by Design. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Thank you so much for being here and thank you also for joining me for today's acrylic painting tutorial where I'll be showing you how to paint this rainy window from start to finish. Let's get started. Alrighty, so as you saw today we will be painting a rainy window. Um, we're using a very limited amount of supplies today. So as usual, I'm using an 8x10 canvas board, a foam plate as my palette, a jar for water, some paper towels, a variety of brushes. I also have my little water mister. And today we're only going to use four paint colors. So we're going to be using titanium white and burnt sienna. Thalo blue and black. That's it for the pink colors. And the brushes we are going to use, you can use either a soft brush for the background. This is my favorite background brush. So this is a bright, it's a one inch bright brush. And then I'm just grabbed a couple little liner brushes and round brushes to show you that you don't need the exact same brush to get the same results. So these are all different, but we'll get there. So you basically only need three brushes. I just took out a whole bunch to show you guys that whatever brush you're using, as long as it's working for you, that's perfectly fine. So let's get started. Now I put the reference in the description below. That's some phthalo blue, burnt sienna. You're probably wondering why I'm using a reddish brown color in the background because there's no red or brown in the actual painting in the picture. It's because phthalo blue and burnt sienna, they make this awesome realistic sky color together because just the phthalo blue straight out of the tube is almost like cartoony for a sky, so it helps to tone it down with a little bit of the red brown because the phthalo blue is a little bit on the green side, so green and red cancel each other out and makes a more neutral blue for the sky. Alrighty, and oh, you might need a palette knife, but you can mix with your brush, so I'm just gonna grab my palette knife here. All right, this one will do. So I'm going to take all of my phthalo blue that I just put out and a little bit of the burnt sienna. Maybe like three parts blue to one part burnt sienna. And I'm just going to mix this all together. Mix, mix, mix. Make sure it's all uniform. And then I'm going to keep a little bit of it off to the side here and add a little bit more burnt sienna to that. Just to have a dark, dark version of this color without having to use the black yet. All right, and then with this other half here, I'm going to be mixing it with white. So we'll grab some of our white, bring it over here, and look how pretty this color is. If you want yours to be a little less moody and a little bit more of a brighter date, use less burnt sienna than I did. But I love this color so much. So I'm just going to make a lighter value of the darkest color. And that's pretty close to our reference image color as well. So It turned out perfect on the first mix. Alright, so that's going to be for our corner. If you look at the reference image, it goes from darkest to lightest, kind of in a diagonal. So that's how we'll be blending today. We'll start with the darkest color and go in towards the light. I'm going to put my palette knife in water so the paint doesn't dry on it. I'll miss my palette so that also doesn't dry. And we can get started right away. This one's going to be a fun one, you guys. I'm very excited. I love painting rainy windows. If you've been following me on Facebook for a while, I've done quite a bit of these. I love them. <clears throat> so, you get a little bit of water on your brush. You don't want it soaking wet. We'll grab the darkest color here. And maybe even some, mix a little bit of the darkest color you used as well. 
And we're just going to go ahead and put this in the corner. We're going to be doing two coats on the background because as the paint dries, it might be a little streaky. So we'll do two coats on the background. So if you don't get it right on the first layer, that's fine. So just get that in a nice diagonal. We can add a little bit darker up here if you'd like. I'm using a back and forth motion with my brush. I'm not pressing super hard. I got a hair in there, so I'm just going to scoop that out. It's back. This hair just wants to be part of the painting today. <clears throat> And then we're going to add white to our brush and start a little bit lower. This is a different blending technique. I'm showing you guys a different way again. <clears throat> so start a little bit lower than the color you just put down and get most of the paint off your brush and then start blending into it. Okay. And then we're just going to keep doing that, adding white till we get all the way to this corner. I'm doing kind of a slight curve as well. But if you don't get this layer right on the first try, it's fine, you guys. We're going to be doing a second coat, so no worries. More white. some of the darker blues getting in there that's fine I'm not too worried about that all right and we're gonna be fairly light when we get to um, the corner the bottom corner almost white but not white my brush here so by offloading I mean I'm getting the extra paint off of it and by doing that I'm just squishing it onto the the plate or palette or whatever you're using and then I'm just going to go back over it lightly just to get more of a blend I'm gonna add a little bit more blue here to get it to blend even more because I'm finding I don't have a nice transition so I'm able to do this because my paint is still fairly wet, but if yours is starting to dry, just wait for the second layer to do this part. I just want it to blend a little bit nicer. And we are going to be covering this with a lot of water drops. So if it looks a little wonky, don't stress. We are doing this for fun. You're learning, you're a beginner. And I want you to enjoy the process of painting. I don't want you to get frustrated. So there you go, that's pretty good for our first layer. I'm going to rinse my brush, mist my palette. 
then we are going to give this a blow dry on the cool setting. You don't want to use heat because the acrylic paint does dry darker than what it is when you put it down. And if you use heat, you might um, color shift that even more. So just use your hair dryer on the cool setting, give it a blow dry, or just let it dry naturally. That's completely fine. So I will dry this, rinse my brushes, and we'll be right back. All right, our background is all nice and dry. I went ahead and washed my brushes with some soap and water. I got some clean water and I've just added a little bit more white paint to my palette. Now we are going to do the exact same thing again. So going from the darkest color to the lightest color, kind of in an arcing diagonal motion. But I'm going to show you another way of blending with, um, this is a fluffy makeup brush, but you can use what's called a mop brush. I think I might have one that's a little bit smaller. I might. I can't find it, but basically it looks like this, but it's actually for acrylic painting. Um, this is just a makeup brush that I didn't use anymore, so I washed it and I use it for painting now. And I don't ever use it for makeup again. <laughs> but basically I'm going to, um, kind of like the video on Tuesday, Tuesday's tutorial, I pasted the paint on kind of thick and messily, and then I just kind of went in with this fluffy brush and blended it. So it's another way of doing it instead of trying to get it all done with one brush I'm going to put the paint on the canvas with this brush and then just smooth it out with this one. If you like your first coat and you kind of like this streaky look by all means leave it like that but I'm gonna go ahead and do a second layer and I think I might have to mix up some of this medium dark color so I'm just going to grab a little bit more of this and I'm gonna mix it off to the side here to make sure I have the same color I'm gonna reference this little dirty spot here And then I'll know if I'm in the same range, and that looks pretty darn good. All right, there we go. So I'm just going to mix a little bit more of this color. Put that in water, and let's do a second layer. And make sure your brush is damp, but not soaking wet. I'll grab some of the darkest color and a little bit of this one. And we're going to paste that on in the corner. And again, for this technique, I'm working messy and in thick applications. We're going to keep this diagonal pattern though. Sorry guys, the camera decided to stop recording, so I missed the part where I actually did the blending, but basically what I did was I went from the darkest color to the lightest in a messy application, and then I took this big fluffy brush and used light, very very light pressure circular motions to blend it in. The reference image is obviously lighter, I kind of like mine a little bit more moody like this, but if you'd like to have yours closer to the reference, just make sure that it's a bigger light transition down here. I'm so sorry the camera cut off, but I promise you didn't miss much. I just did a second layer on the background. I went ahead and gave it a quick blow dry on the cool setting and I rinsed out my brushes. And now we're going to move on to the water drop. So I'm going to bring you guys a little bit closer and we'll get started on that. All right, so now I have you much closer. We're gonna start working on our raindrops. And for the sake of keeping this beginner friendly, I'm gonna simplify them quite a bit, but they're still gonna look awesome, don't you worry. Um, we are going to need a small detail brush or a liner brush. So I think I'm going to do either one of these. And you're also going to need another small brush it's a little bit bigger than these ones just for some blending and all we're going to be using is the dark color we mixed up we're going to mix it with a little bit of black and white that's it that's all we're going to need for this next step and it's going to be fairly repetitive so i'm going to grab our darkest color that we had saved from earlier 
and I'm going to grab some black and I'm going to be mixing the two of them together so that it's not pure black. If you don't have a palette knife, you can mix with your brush. Alrighty, and we're going to leave that off to the side. And then we have some pure white, and that's all we're going to need. So I will be getting my brush wet in the jar. When you are using a small brush like this, it's, a, it's important that your paint is a little bit thinned down. So it's great, heavy body paint is great for when you're actually using a, a bigger brush or a brush like this. But when you're using a tiny brush, it's easier if it's a little bit more of on the liquid side. So I'm just going to make sure my brush is more wet than usual. I'm going to pull some off to the side here. And just get it to like a more inky consistency. And you can test it on your palette to see if it's going to flow nicely. And I think that is. So I'm going to twirl the brush in the paint. So that there's no big blobs or anything. And then I'm going to just pick a random spot on your canvas and just do a little semicircle like this. We're going to do a big drop first and then we're going to take our clean other brush and we're just going to smudge that towards the middle. So you want to blend that in. If it's not blending right for you, just add a little bit of water to that brush. There we go. And if you like to be messy like me and you know you have no allergies, you can use your fingers for this part, but you basically just want a blended line here. I feel like I could bring you guys a little bit closer. One second. Alrighty, now you're nice and close in here. So I'm just doing this little curved line. And then grabbing the other brush, I just threw it in the water, so I'll just grab another brush. And then I'm just blending out that edge. And if it's not blending, just add a little bit of water. And just smudge that towards the middle. You want to leave some of your background color showing. So only take this a little bit towards the halfway mark, but not all the way down. And now... I'm going to just rinse this color off because I'm going to show you one super close up. We'll do a couple close up like that and then I'm going to show you how to get it done a little bit faster. You can do them one at a time. I just prefer to have like one coat done and then do the other step. So now for the other part, we're just going to connect this line with just pure white. And we're going to blend it up towards the middle, but we're going to leave some of our background show colors show. So just blend it a little bit. Okay, so that is the first little one. And we're also going to be adding a little curved highlight here. So I'm going to pick my light source coming this way. So all of my highlights on every single water drop, no matter what the shape is, is going to be on this side. And I'm just going to add a tiny curved line like this. And then all we're going to have to do is add a little shadow at the bottom. And we did a water drop, you guys. It was that easy. <laughs> this is why I really enjoy painting raindrops and water drops because they look complicated but they're fairly simple and they're so fun so now i'm watering my black down quite a bit and i'm using my liner brush and i'm going to go directly underneath this and just add a tiny little shadow blot that in and there you go you painted a raindrop we're going to do another one together we're going to pick a different shape I'm just going to rinse my brush and get some more of the dark black blue color we mixed up. And let's do another one right here. And we'll do this one a little bit longer instead of circular and a little smaller. 
So we're gonna go like this. And then we're gonna blend this color in with our other brush. There's too much water on my brush here, so it's kind of making a mess. So what I'm going to do is grab a dry piece of paper towel and just blot that. Okay. And there we go. And you can make it so that it's a little bit like wonky. And now we're gonna switch back over to our white. And get some white paint on your brush. And then connect those lines. So instead of making it more circular, you can make it a little bit more long and oval. And then we're gonna smudge that in. And if you're worried about it turning gray, we don't want that. You can let it dry first. Okay. And then we're gonna rinse our brush real quick. And if you took out too much of your background color, you can just grab your background color and just put it back in. It's as simple as that. Blot it. Rinse your brush, and then take that watered down black blue paint and give it a little shadow. And you can smudge it with your finger. And then, oops, I'm just gonna smudge that out a little bit more. This is just a clean, damp brush. Okay, and I'm gonna grab my pure white and give it a little highlight right here on the top. And there you go, you painted another water drop. They don't have to be all the same, they don't have to be perfect. You're gonna do a few like this. I'm just gonna refine this shadow here. All righty. And now we, I can show you how to make a tiny, tiny, tiny little water drop. So for this one, we're just gonna make a very, very small circle. Okay, using that black, blue paint that we mixed up. And then you're gonna grab your white paint and just add a little dot. And that's how you make a tiny, tiny, tiny raindrop. And now we're just gonna go across the whole entire canvas like this. And you wanna leave some spaces. You don't wanna cluster them all together. You don't wanna make the same shape every time. So I'm gonna keep you guys fairly zoomed in for this part here so that we can do a few more together. And then this gets really meditative, you guys. Like you get right into this. And you, before you know it, your whole painting is done. So we're gonna do another one. Maybe this one's like a little bit pointy. Okay, and grab your clean brush. And we're just gonna smudge towards the middle. Now I'm gonna show you how I would do it so that I don't have to keep rinsing my brushes on and off. So what I would do if I was painting this by myself at home is I would just do a bunch of shapes like this. And 
And then once they're all dry, I would go and add the white part. And no, I'm moving around the canvas so that I don't end up creating patterns because we went over this and patterns really draw your eye in. And we don't want that. You want your eyes to move all across the painting and not just stay in one spot. So you want to make some smaller, some larger ones. Smudge the paint. Okay. So you're just going to keep doing that. You can have a couple more bigger ones. Let's say we'll do another big one right here. Smudge. Right. And the trick is to make them look realistic is to leave some of your background color showing through them because it's water. It wouldn't cover the whole thing and you don't want to end up making a gray color by accident. So just let your paint dry if you're worried about that. Kind of like what we're doing here. I'm doing a few and then we'll go back in and we'll add the white highlights. Uh, let's do like a long one. And if you're more comfortable closing the entire shape instead of doing half like that, you can absolutely do that. If that's easier for you, do it like that. And maybe we'll do one that's off to the side a little bit. Kind of like this, like when it hit the window, it kind of got smushed. Blend that top edge. Okay, let's do another tiny one right here. Perfect. Whoops, I'm using the wrong brush here. <laughs> and then we can do another one here. Maybe this one's a little bit more flat this way. And if you shaded it too much, just grab a clean, damp brush and you can just wipe some away while it's still wet. Okay, maybe we'll do a long one like this. Okay. Smudge that. And no matter what shape they are, they're going to use the same technique as the first one we did here. So I'm going to stop there real quick. And we're going to add some white to these. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial so far. I'm sorry about the camera shutting off. It was quite rude of it to do that to us, but that's okay. I promise you really didn't miss much. And you can do this in whatever color you want. As long as you're using the same technique, you can make this pink, purple, yellow, orange, whatever it is, and it'll look amazing. So I'm going to need my blending brush again. I'm just going to rinse it off. Grab my paper towel. There we go. And now we're going to do the same thing with the white. So we'll do this one. Connect and then blend it in. Smudge it with your finger if that helps. Same thing to all the water drops. Maybe we'll refine this one now that it's dry. 
because it did kind of turn gray on us the first time. And you can just keep playing with these until you're happy with how they look. There we go. And no matter what shape they are, they're going to follow the same principle. Little dot. Oop, for the little tiny one. It's already looking kind of amazing. Just leave some background color in the middle. get my brush a little bit damp if you don't like doing with the brush and you know you have no allergies or anything you can blend it with your finger And now we're going to add our little top highlights. Sorry, that was my cat. <laughs> Boop. Boop. You want to curve this because your raindrop is curved. a little too much we'll just wipe it away and just redo it there we go and now we're gonna add the shadows at the bottoms and we're basically gonna repeat the same process for the whole painting so I'm gonna spritz my palette because it's getting a bit dry I'm gonna water down my black and now if I was painting this for myself, I would use what's called, let me show you here, um, this product here, uh, gloss glazing liquid. This stuff is amazing for thinning down your paint if you don't want to use water. I'm just going to put a little bit out and show you. This is a treat. You don't need to use it. I really, really, really like this product. It's, it's a glaze, so meaning it'll turn your color transparent without you having to use a bunch of water to do it. So we'll just add the little shadow at the bottom. This is looking pretty fantastic. I hope you guys are loving this. I know I am. I really love painting rainy windows. <laughs> and the trick with the shadows is that you don't want a hard line, so you want the line underneath to be soft. I'm blending it with my finger, but you can blend it with your brush. 
there we go so that's looking amazing and we're just basically gonna keep repeating this step until we've made enough raindrops that we're happy with so I'm gonna zoom you guys back out and we're just going to keep repeating this process all right, I decided to go ahead and speed this part up a little bit. It is a fairly repetitive process. We're doing the exact same steps we did for the zoomed in water drops. So we're adding a black line to the top and smudging it towards the middle, adding a white line at the bottom and smudging that towards the middle. And we're then adding a little white highlight curved at the top and a little shadow at the bottom. I'm playing around with different shapes, different sizes, I'm moving all around my canvas so that I don't create a pattern. This process gets super meditative. Just grab yourself a nice cup of coffee, a tea, water, juice, whatever you'd like to drink. Grab yourself a snack. You can play some relaxing music and just get into this really nice meditative state. This part of the painting process is super relaxing. Um, completing all of these water drops actually took me about two hours, almost two hours and a half. I just kept playing around with them, I kept adding more. Um, I ended up really loving how this painting turned out and I hope you guys are loving it too. The people who are part of my Facebook group, they voted for this. If you'd like to join the Facebook group and vote on future tutorials or you'd like to see some charity auction art pieces, the link will be down in the description below. And again, the reference image will also be down there and the links to all my other social medias. So yeah, I'll let you guys go and we'll meet back up when we're all done painting. That's it, we did it. Here's the tour around the canvas. I absolutely love this process and I hope you enjoyed it too. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment below and if you'd like to show me your work, join the Facebook group. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you Tuesday for another tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this tutorial and make sure to click the notification bell to be notified when I upload next. Thank you so much again for being here and I appreciate you. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye.